you head to the west side of Sleepy Forest and walk towards the village of Lower Starry Skies, you'll pass Aunt Tilly's cottage. That's the one with the roses that bloom year-round. And if she's at home, you'll know, because there'll be a soft scent of cinnamon cookies or freshly baked bread lingering in the air. And a sunshine-coloured van called Yellow Mellow will be waiting outside for the next adventure. Keep going a little further along the lane, and there's a pale pink cottage where Mrs Bumble lives. Have a look over the hedge and see if you can spot her white cat. Snowball is all soft mounds of fluff and fur, and his favourite place is curled up beneath the star-shaped jasmine flowers. He's probably there. And yes, if you look, you can just see his tail, rising and falling slowly as he sleeps. And even further along the lane, past Aunt Tilly and past Mrs Bumble, and past the little wishing well, is Mr Featherman's home. Mr Featherman's garden is easily the most colourful garden in the whole of Lower Starry Skies. Yes, there are loads of flowers, climbing up walls and fences and draping themselves over stones and falling out of flower beds. But more than that, even more colourful than all those flowers, there are the gnomes. Mr Featherman began gathering the gnomes together a long, long time ago, and he now has hundreds of them all around his garden. He has teeny tiny gnomes that live underneath the forget-me-not flowers, and he has bigger gnomes, as tall as a watermelon that live beneath the shade of the oak and apple trees. Some of these gnomes spend their day fishing in the pond, and others push wheelbarrows of fallen apples, and others hold rakes to help clear up the fallen leaves. Sometimes Mr Featherman moves the gnomes around so they can get to see a new corner of the garden. He'll stand them next to new plant pots, or place them on miniature swings he has made, or find them a shaded spot if they've been out in the sun for a while, and a sunny spot if they've been hiding in the shadows. He takes great care of his gnomes and loves that people will come to peer into his garden and see what they're all up to. Each year in June, he takes time to check each and every one of over a hundred gnomes to see if their hats are still clean and their jackets are still smart. He goes around with a little box of paints and makes sure they're looking as good as when they arrived in the garden. If he finds that a gnome has fallen over in the wind and damaged themselves, he always takes great care to repair them and make them look just perfect once more. Mr Featherman would say he knows everything about the gnomes and can tell you where each one has spent their life in his garden and what colour jacket he has had them wear last year and the year before and the year before that. He knows which ones the sparrows and blue jays spend the most time with and which ones the butterflies like to land on when they take a rest from fluttering among the flowers. But actually, Mr Featherman doesn't know so very much at all about his gnomes, because when the evening comes and Mr Featherman goes inside and draws the curtains and makes himself all warm and cosy inside his house, the gnomes have a whole other life. They wait until they're absolutely sure that Mr. Featherman has climbed the stairs and brushed his teeth and pulled on his striped pyjamas. They wait until he's definitely underneath the covers and tucked up in his bed with his dog at his feet. And finally, they wait until they hear his gentle snores drifting out across the garden and the gnomes know they can stretch their arms and ease their legs out of position and slowly, ever so slowly, start to move around once more. Of course, the most important thing is to remember where they're positioned at that moment. Since Mr Featherman likes to move them around, and Mr Featherman remembers absolutely everything about the lives of his gnomes, they must get back to exactly where they were when the evening began. You might think that gnomes only know how to do one thing, that just because they spend all day holding a fishing rod and looking, hopefully, into a pond, the only thing they can do is hold a fishing rod. 
But gnomes are incredibly smart little creatures and they have an incredibly important job to do too. They gather good luck charms. Something can only be lucky if a little magic has been poured into it and that is exactly what gnomes do. Some lucky charms they leave where they find them, things like four-leaf clovers. But others, they take back home and store in a huge chest they have buried at the far end of the garden. These charms are extra special ones, because gnomes can send them out into the world and find people who are in need of a little more luck in that moment. Have you ever had one of those days where everything falls into place somehow? When you wake up, from a really super long sleep when you had wonderful dreams, when breakfast is your favourite breakfast of all, and when you go to school and all your favourite games are played and you manage to stretch your hand up high and answer one of the teacher's questions. And then, as if by magic, you get to have your absolute favourite dinner too. Perhaps something like pizza with cheese that stretches and stretches further than your arm can reach and someone reads you your favourite story when you've climbed into bed and wriggled your way deep beneath the blankets. Those days don't happen all the time, and if they did, they'd soon become very boring indeed. But when they do come around, it's probably because a gnome has left a lucky charm somewhere nearby. The gnomes in Mr Featherman's garden can travel hundreds of miles in a single night to deliver luck to all corners of the world. It's easy to travel great distances when you're full to overflowing with magic. Of course, the gnomes in other people's gardens do the same thing too. So, whether you're in the tiniest village nobody else has ever heard of, or in the centre of the busiest city which is absolutely full of people, the gnomes are able to find you. Even if you've never seen a gnome in real life, they will find you on the days when you need things to go a little bit better. One of the rarest but luckiest things in the world is a four-leaf clover. Whole groups of gnomes spend hours and hours looking for them so they can pour a little dose of luck into each and every one. Tonight, it is the turn of the tiny gnomes that live beneath the forget-me-not flowers to head to a clearing in Sleepy Forest in search of four-leaf clovers. They work as a team, starting off at one side of the field. There are seven gnomes working tonight, and they all get down on their hands and knees and slowly work their way through the long grass, checking each and every clover they come across and solemnly counting the number of leaves. Their little hats are painted in a rainbow of colours. So, on the far left, there is a gnome with a red hat. Next to him is a gnome in an orange hat. He's alongside a gnome in a yellow hat, who is alongside a gnome in a green hat. Of course, being a rainbow, the gnome next to him is wearing a blue hat, and he works next to a gnome in an indigo hat. At the far end, on the right, is the last tiny gnome wearing a violet hat. This perfect rainbow moves forwards inch by inch, high-fiving each other when they find one of the special four-leaf clovers and taking care to add a dab of good luck to each and every one. This scene is repeated around the world, with hundreds of rainbow-hatted teams crawling through fields and gardens, making sure they find every single four-leaf clover before a person stumbles across it. Gnomes will always organise themselves into lines that look like a rainbow, if they can, because rainbows are in themselves a little bit magical. Some of the bigger gnomes are sent out to look for the heavier things that bring a lot of luck. Did you know that horseshoes are lucky? But only if you put them the right way up. The curve has to be at the bottom, otherwise all the luck could easily pour out. Teams of gnomes spend hours checking out stables and fields where horses hang out, looking for discarded horseshoes and making sure they're put the right way up. If you should ever be in Norway, 
be sure to keep your eyes open for acorns. These are absolutely filled to overflowing with good luck, and the gnomes in Norway have a very busy time in the autumn months, checking the ground beneath all the oak trees for fallen acorns, and making sure each and every one gets a little dab of good luck added to it. Sometimes, the gnomes like to give people a chance who don't live anywhere near oak trees at all, so they will fill little sacks with the lucky acorns and take them to the middle of cities and drop them off one by one outside schools or even, if the gnomes are feeling particularly cheeky, pop them into a shoe when nobody's looking. Gnomes around the world love to make things fun for people and they're always hiding doses of good luck in the strangest places. They decided long ago that it would be fun to make pigs lucky in Germany and Austria and it didn't take long for people to realise that if they had a little china pig around, they had a lot of extra luck. The winter markets in Vienna are filled with stalls covered in shining china pigs, each of them carefully brushed by a gnome to ensure it is packed with luck. There is something rather wonderful about wandering around, all bundled up in your warmest hat and coat, mittens and scarf, feet buried into the coziest boots, and your nose all pink from being so very warm and cosy and looking at table after table, absolutely covered in shining china pigs. It takes time to pick the perfect pig to give as a present to somebody, so there are other stalls selling steaming mugs of hot chocolate, just to make sure everyone is as snug as they can possibly be. And people drink those, along with huge pieces of fresh-from-the-oven, still-warm cake. Do you know what the luckiest number in all the world is said to be? Some people pick their own lucky number, perhaps using their birthday or their house number, or the number of cartwheels they can do in a minute as their special lucky number. If a particular number feels special to you, then you're probably absolutely right, and it is surely a little bit of luck that you can take with you everywhere you go. But if you don't yet have a number that feels lucky, perhaps you should go with what most people in China think is the luckiest of all. It's the number eight. And that means gnomes across China spend an awful lot of time tracking down every single number eight there is. Imagine all the work they must do finding all those number eights. Every single calendar has loads of number eights in it. Every watch and clock needs to be checked, in case it has numbers painted on. Every building that is number eight must get a special bit of gnome luck added. And then, they need to head inside to see if there's a lift that goes to the eighth floor with a button that can be pressed to take you there. Just imagine all the places you might find a number eight. It is the work of a lifetime for Chinese gnomes to add a little dab of luck to every single one. There are page numbers in books and numbers on classroom doors, numbers on calculators and on trains and planes and buses. Because they like to do things properly, they've also imagined groups of eight animals and been sure to send a little good luck their way. It's lucky to see eight kittens all curled up in a soft, warm bundle on a sofa. It's lucky to see eight dogs taking a nap together, legs and tails and damp noses all piled together in one big group of gently slumbering, softly snoring dog. And it's lucky to look up into the branches of a tree and see eight owls lined up alongside each other, their eyes closed, and their heads bobbing slowly as they sleep their way through a lazy afternoon. The rainbow of gnomes from Mr. Featherman's garden, the ones who headed out into the field to look for four-leaf clovers, are starting to head home. 
in many hours of slowly crawling and checking each and every clover and counting its leaves, they've managed to find five of the four-leaf ones, onto which they've added a little dab of good luck. They covered half the field tonight, and will head back again tomorrow night to check the other half. Think of a field of rolling green, perhaps like the one the gnomes have been in that is surrounded by trees on three sides and bushes filled with blackberries on the other. Being very tiny gnomes, they of course went underneath the gate to get into the field, bending low enough that their hats wouldn't get swept off their heads and always walking in a perfect rainbow line. With the moon bright and lighting the way for them, and the stars doing their best to shine as much as possible and throw a little more light down onto the field, the work was made easy. Although they have plenty of magical ways to get back to Mr. Featherman's garden in the blink of an eye, they're enjoying the beautiful early morning and walking home. One of them, the gnome in the blue hat, is rolling a coin beside him. He found a penny in the field, and he's decided to take it home, give it a wash in the garden pond, and then pop it into the chest at the bottom of the garden. One day, when they've decided they want to spread a little good luck around, they'll take the penny and drop it off where it can be easily found. Down the backs of old chairs are good places for them to slip pennies. And so, they walk along the lane together, ready to get back to the garden and spend a whole day of standing perfectly still in exactly the right place, beneath the forget-me-not flowers, so that Mr. Featherman will have no idea at all what they've been up to all night. The one with the yellow hat has been counting yellow flowers as they go. He's seen three dandelions and four buttercups so far, and they only have a few more steps to go until they're back at home in the garden, so he's looking high and low for just one more flower. He walks back towards Mrs. Bumble's cottage and peers through the fence to see if she has any yellow flowers in her garden. There are red roses climbing the wall and hanging baskets overflowing with pink and purple flowers and Snowball has just come home and is settling herself gently beneath the star-shaped jasmine flowers once more, for cats are never able to get enough sleep. The tiny yellow-hatted gnome walks further still to Aunt Tilly's cottage and takes a quick peek in there, still searching for yellow flowers. And there it is, right in the middle of a perfect green lawn is a single yellow buttercup, freshly washed with morning dew. The gnome has found eight yellow flowers, and he feels a special rush of good luck. He'll save that up and share it with the next clover or horseshoe or penny he finds. And so the gnome heads back home and finds the others beneath the forget-me-not flowers. He picks up the tiny rake that Mr. Featherman placed in his hands just a few days before and leans forward as if ready to brush up any petals or leaves that may fall to the ground. He gives his hat an extra little shake to make sure it is pointing in just the right direction and smiles at the other gnomes who are already in place armed with their miniature wheelbarrows and buckets and fishing rods. Some bees appear and start buzzing around the flowers, and their gentle noise is a soothing lullaby to the yellow-hatted gnome. The sun feels warm on his face, and his eyes slowly start to close as he gently drifts to sleep, seeing if he is able to reach eight sheep in his mind's eye before he starts to dream. Here's the first sheep, a soft, white, fluffy bundle moving slowly across a field. And the second sheep 
following in the path of the first. There's the third sheep, head to the ground and eating the grass as it goes. The fourth sheep, moving even slower than the others. The fifth sheep appears, taking a moment to pause alongside a gathering of daisies. A sixth sheep comes into view. A seventh sheep, and finally, an eighth sheep, fleece as fluffy and white as any of the others, mouth to the ground and working its way along through the grass. Eight lucky sheep are all it takes for the little gnome to fall fast asleep beneath the forget-me-not flowers safe in the corner of Mr. Featherman's glorious garden. Eight lucky sheep to help him drift into a land of dreams, where he finds fields filled to the brim with four-leaf clovers and trips over gleaming pennies. Eight lucky sheep, all white and fluffy, waiting in the corner of a field to wander through his mind's eye again the next night and help the little gnome have the coziest, snuggliest, most wonderful sleep in all the world.